welcome. I'm Dr. Jack Tips, and it's my pleasure to introduce to you a segment of this presentation by Dr. Daniel Pompa. Dr. Daniel Pompa is from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, is a chiropractor there, and I've known him for 20 years as a, a man who's on a mission, and the mission is to train doctors and to train the chiropractors and health professionals in some of the deeper, more effective aspects of clinical nutrition. So we're ready for a treat here as Dr. Pompa is going to show us how we can use this information about the thyroid package by systemic formulas and be able to give a talk and be able to reach out to new people in the community by speaking about the thyroid and thus getting more people exposed to the benefits that this program can do. So let's welcome Dr. Daniel Pompa. Well, that's right. Uh, you said it. Someone just said because 90% of the people actually have a thyroid problem and don't what? No. Know it, right? I mean, that's why this is a massive epidemic, you know, that we have to address. And also now, when you market for the thyroid talk, you flood your office. And the best part about it is y'all have the answers, you know, and that's the best part. So that's why you have to, you know, understand these Things. Now, I'm, gonna, I don't, I'm not going to go through all these slides because, you know, I want you to understand the concept, but I do want to make a few points to get you to the first concept. It is an epidemic. That slide goes over, and you already said it. 90% of, you know, people, according to Dr. Uh, Broda Barnes, says that 90% of America, men and women, have some type of hypothyroid and don't know it. But there's the statistics for you to look at. Here's the other thing. Just like with diabetes, collateral damage. A lot of people don't realize that thyroid plays into a lot of these other diseases like, of course, obesity um, and blocked aorta. Who knew that? 50% of depression could be from an undiagnosed thyroid condition. Did, did you hear that one? So a lot of depression is coming from the thyroid. And I love this one, uh, the autoimmune types, Hashimoto's, psychosis, she, se seizures, thank you, dementia and mood changes can be from Hashimoto's autoimmune hypothyroid. So, I mean, there's the kind of stuff that people have to understand that, you know, wow, you know, that problem may not be directly um, related to the drug they're putting me on. <laughs> it could be uh, my thyroid. Um, and I like to always show the symptoms because especially with thyroid, even when we market, people respond to the symptoms and relate to it because how many people all of a sudden have sudden weight gain? What about hot flashes? You know, a lot of women don't realize their hot flashes are really due because their hormone dysregulation, because their thyroid's not working well. And yet their blood work looks what? Yeah. Normal. Yeah, so we use in the marketing, we always use these things to, to market for it. Brain fog, infertility, constipation. You know, we've been talking a lot about the GI, but the thyroid plays a role in constipation as well as infertility. So really, you know, some different ways to market and get people to think, oh boy, you know, it could be my thyroid. And that's what you want them to say. Most women, I would say more than men, always have a suspicion that something's wrong with their thyroid, whether it's they're cold all the time, their extremities are cold, they lack energy, brain fog, you know, but yet they go to their doctors, they get their blood work, and it ends up being normal. And so they go 20, 30 years, perhaps, thinking with a major problem until they're actually diagnosed. And then all of a sudden, once the blood works abnormal, now we have a lot of ground to make up. So one of the first, the, the first action steps that we wanna take here in teaching is really going through you know, why the blood work can be normal, um, as far, why the blood work can look normal and you still have a problem. So in the talk, of course, we kind of give some basic explanation. But let's just kind of quickly go through some of this so we can get to that first teaching action step. 80% of the time, thyroid hormone does nothing to relieve symptoms. And as, in other words, we're exposing this myth that, you know, this is the answer. Thyroid replacement hormone, you know, is the answer to your problem. You know, we're, again, same with diabetes. We're, they think that. However, with this condition, I think people think it less because they're on it and their blood work is normal when they're taking their T4. However, their symptoms are still there, okay? So here, I think we have to look right at the fact that a lot of conditions are autoimmune, okay? So a lot of the patients are autoimmune. Even when the blood work isn't autoimmune, showing autoantibodies, a lot of thyroid, and it's estimated up to 80% of hypothyroid can be autoimmune. 
And I think that's definitely related to different areas of the country. However, the difference is, is that autoimmune conditions do not respond to T4. So do you understand what I just said there? In other words, a lot of people are taking T4, they're autoimmune, and they don't know it. Doctors aren't running the blood work even to check if they're autoimmune. Why not? No. The treat, their treatment's the same, Philip. Their treatment's the same, so why even run the blood work? Yeah, okay, you meant that. Yeah, so their treatment's the same, so why the heck are they running the blood work? So the point is, is that we, our treatment is completely different, and, and you're going to learn that in a minute if this is new to you, and so we need to know if somebody's in a state of autoimmune. That's really important to us, but to the doctors, they don't care, but they're giving them T4, and the T4 does nothing for autoimmune. See why that's a problem? All right, so we want to bring that out, you know, first and foremost. Look, 1971, before that, we actually used to actually look at patients and evaluate them on the, how they felt. In other words, at least doctors did. They would say, oh, we need to adjust your medication because you're still cold or this has happened. So they didn't treat the, uh, the lab value. They actually treated the patient. Well, now all we treat is the what? The gold standard is the TSH. In other words, as long as I have your TSH in the normal range, we call that success. Is that success? No. no. So, you know, again, at this point, we want our patients to understand that we don't treat on TSH. Your doctors do, and it has nothing to do with really how, how, you, know, how you feel. Because look at this. The gold standard TSH, not one study published demonstrates that normal TSH has anything to do with normal thyroid function. Okay, so, you know, that's not my opinion. You know, that's simply fact. So, no studies show that normal thyroid function has anything to do with a normal TSH level. So it's really important to point out. Now, you do, should be marking some of these down because I'm going to make you understand some of those concepts. So that's one of these four reasons why blood work can look normal, okay, and you still don't feel well. Because doctors look at TSH as the gold standards, which means nothing as far as how your thyroid's functioning. Also. When they look at TSH, so this is the second TSH point, when they look at TSH, they're using a normal value that is way too wide. When you look at the studies, they say that anything under two is really, or I'm sorry, anything over two is not normal. So if you're going to look at it, at least go from 0.35 to two is a normal that I try to look, keep my patients at. But again, not a good indicator of whether it's a normal thyroid function or not. Okay, so this point right here is a big one, and I don't think we have to, you know, belabor it, that it's very similar to type, type, type 2 diabetes in the sense that it's not the thyroid gland itself, it's the what? It's the cell, it's the receptor. So in other words, hormone problems are not problems with hormones, it's problems with what? The receptor. All right. So that's the second reason why blood work can look normal. And I'm going to summarize these again. The other reason is right here. T4 must be converted to T3. And I went over this earlier. Earlier, This takes place in the liver. Okay. So not the thyroid gland. Oftentimes this is hindered. What else did I say hinders that? What else did I say hinders that? Insulin. Insulin. Thank you. Insulin. All right. Everybody look up here a second. And then I'm going to make you teach. T4 has to convert to active T3. Is everybody with me so far? I want you to draw this with your partner A, partner B. T4 must be converted to T3, OK? Then draw a cell, because you're going to explain it this way. Because this is what, you can go over slides all day long, but when you come to this board and you do this in your lecture, this is what people resonate with. This must convert to this. This is the active hormone that makes the cell everything, you know, talks to the DNA and makes everything work. On the cell, we have the receptors, these proteins, that have to communicate to the T3. Okay? So, example number one, we talked about what are the three things that can cause inflammation on this membrane? Thank you. Thank you. And toxins. Those things can cause a, uh, a thyroid resistance, just like insulin resistance, in, 
basically impede that communication with the T3 in the cell. So it's, it's similar to type 2 diabetes, right? So we're going to call that we're going to call that hormone resistance, right? That's hormone resistance. Okay, so that's the other big one that we've been mentioning, hormone resistance. The other one is you can't convert T4 to T3. You could have a liver problem. You could have an insulin problem, which is still happening in the liver. So that conversion is a problem. Also, I don't want to confuse you, but low uh, selenium can also, uh, because uh, Ty, you point out that's a selenium receptor. So that also can impede that uh, that transfer to T4 to T3. So the liver, insulin, selenium, all can keep this from transferring to the T3. All those three things that drive cellular inflammation, causing hormone resistance, can be a reason why the blood work looks normal. Okay, lastly, in times of stress, your body wants to conserve energy. It uses something called RT3, so from the T4, draw this, RT3, or yeah, RT3. So in times of stress, instead of converting T4 to T3, it converts it to RT3. So it's like a, a mere image of T3. Now what RT3 does is RT3 comes in here and it blocks, it goes and it attaches to the same receptor that T3 attaches to. And what does it do to the T3? it blocks it. Now this is good because if you get the flu, your body wants to conserve its energy to do what? Other things, healing, its immune system, right? So your body does this in times of stress. If I stressed you out emotionally, it would run T4 to T3 or RT3 to block, so it produces the RT3, it shunts it down here, and it blocks the T3 to conserve energy. So it would do that in a time of toxic stress, you know, I mean, in any stress. Remember, your body doesn't know the difference of chemical stress, emotional stress, or physical stress. But any acute stress, your body will deal th do with this to conserve its energy. Okay, now look, here's the problem. When stress becomes chronic in nature, remember we talked about earlier that changes the whole game, right? Well, when it becomes chronic, now all of a sudden RT3 is being used, it's, it's blocking the receptor all the time. So guess what? The blood work looks normal because, you see, the doctors are looking at the normal values up here, not understanding that it could be the receptor on the cell. So again, you have all this gas, but you can't get in the tank. So that could, be, that could be resistance or it could be RT3, that your body's actually in a state of chronic stress. What, give me an example of chronic stress. Divorce. Divorce. And your body's still in this state of stress. So that's causing your thyroid to malfunction yeah. because you're producing too much RT3. That's called, by the way, RT3 dominance. Write that down. Let me give you some other causes of RT3 dominance. Reverse T3. Oh, reverse. Right. Good question. We know that insulin resistance causes RT3 dominance. Toxic load, which is stress, causes RT3 dominance. We know that depleted methylation, the lack of certain B vitamins, even B6, causes RT3 dominance. Um, me low methylation can cause RT3 dominance. Leptin resistance, insulin resistance, stress, all cause reverse T3 dominance. Real fast, this is a teaching moment. Um, when a trick that we do is that we look at free T3 in blood work divided by RT3. And even when they're in the normal range, that should be anywhere between 1.5 and 2.2. That is a trick when someone has normal blood work to see that they're abnormal. So you'll, they'll be on the low side. They'll be around one instead of around two. If you just remember that, if someone's around one, on that ratio. We teach that at the seminar, but I'm, I'm trying to get you to understand how we do that. When they're around one on that ratio, that's bad. When they're around two, that's good. Or, yeah, did I say that right? Yeah, I did. Okay, so two is, two, is uh, two is good, being around one is bad. But that ratio of free T3 over reverse T3 on blood work. Okay, so here's the point. I want you to take this away. So the, the four things in summary 
are, look up at the screen one second, autoimmune. If you have an autoimmune condition, you can be taking T4 replacement hormone and that makes your blood work normal but yet you still have all your symptoms because it does nothing for autoimmune. So the number one reason your you know, blood work could look normal is you have autoimmune and yet you're taking T4, it makes your blood work normal but you don't feel normal. So autoimmune. Number two is hormone resistance, okay, like type 2 diabetes and the three things that cause inflammation. Okay, unable to convert T4 to T3 which that can be due to reverse T3, or the, um, yeah, the reverse T3, what I just explained. And the fourth reason is you can't use TSH to determine thyroid function. So those are the four reasons why your blood work could be normal and you not feel well. Okay, so those four things, any questions on those four things? Do you all understand those four things before I move on? I wanna point something out. So, but the other point is the second part of your question is, and you brought up is that, okay, great. You know, a large part of why people have their blood work looks normal, you know, and they still don't feel well is because of what? Hormone resistance, because the inflammation of the membrane, right? So inflammation of the membrane, this is where our cellular healing comes in, right? So all the products we've been talking about, you know, Moore's, Vista, you know, I mean, all of those products play a role in fixing this condition. You know, so there's two parts, and I'm, I'm going to get into the iodine in a minute because you can't treat thyroid without it. But here's the mistake. Ready? This is really important. You have two groups of people. You have a group of people who get the, the iodine and they use it correctly. Then you have another group who are afraid to use it. Why is one group afraid to use iodine? What's that? Yeah, thyroid storm. So if you give iodine to a person with, it's autoimmune, that means your body's attacking itself, a Hashimoto's. If you give them iodine, they're not going to like you, okay? So you don't do that. However, the other group, there's another group of people who say you can't fix a thyroid condition without giving iodine. They're right also. And because the reason why is you need iodine to clear this receptors. Because these certain types of chemicals, heavy metals, chemicals called halogens, chlorine, fluoride, you know, all of them. I mean, all the, you know, we talked a lot about some of those chemicals this weekend. They attach to these receptors on the thyroid, on the cell, and it's an iodine receptor, a selenium receptor. We have to kick that stuff out of there. So you need the iodine. So the problem is, remember I said, well, MDs, they don't want to test for autoimmune because their treatment's the same. They give T4, right? However, we want to test because if someone's in autoimmune and you give them iodine, that's not going to be good. So we have to get them out of the autoimmune stage, a lot of the cellular things, and I'm gonna give you some other tricks, will get them out of that autoimmune stage, down regulating inflammation. You know, the gut plays a role in this too. I have a slide for that. You know, but the point is, you get them out of the autoimmune, and now you give them iodine, and you start with a low amount. So once you start then, with the iodine, you start clearing that receptor. So here's the, here's, the, here's the teaching point here. You cannot fix these thyroid conditions without true cellular healing. You have to heal the cell membrane. And most doctors that understand iodine don't understand that part. So in other words, if you're giving iodine, you know how to use it, and you're doing everything correctly, you still have to fix this membrane. You know, we, you all know how to fix that. We have the tools to do that. However, the other side of the coin is you still need iodine to clear those receptors. You know, and it works. It works like magic. So it is a two-part treatment. It's the, using the iodine correctly at the correct time once you get them out of autoimmune, and then healing the membrane, which always starts first. Always, always, always. You start with fixing the cell. So what happens when the reverse T3 is that someone's in RT3 dominant? When someone's in RT3 dominant, we know that you have to put the adrenals into the pit treatment. So GA is really important. So if you see that RT3 is up, you have to put in the adrenals. Jack has said that for years. So the adrenal glands are huge. Also, R number one, removing the source that could be driving the chronic stress, right? I mean, if someone has toxins in their mouth that's driving the stress situation, you know, you have to address R number one. So when someone's RT3 dominant, Put them on GA is a first line of defense. That's why in my thyroid protocol, typically GA is there the first month, okay? 
There's a type of selenium called selenomethionine that you can use to help clear the receptor. And typically, I put them on all the cellular healing uh, protocol, the cellular healing diet, and I add selenium methionine in for the first month or two. And what that does is it clears the receptor and it lowers. I mean, listen, you heard this woman say how important taking grains was out of the diet. When you look at this, I have to back up. Poor digestion, food intolerance. It, this is a big problem driving autoimmune hypothyroid because these antibodies leak across the gut and flare up the immune system. We've been kind of talking about that all weekend, right? So again, the mistake that a lot of MDs make is they think the problem is just the thyroid. Well, as you look here, the problem could be the adrenals, the pituitary, the pancreas, the liver. So always consider all of these glands when you consider treating this condition, as well as the GI. Okay, but again, when it comes to the autoimmune, the GI has to be a part of your treatment, and you learned that. <laughs> you learned it with your own experience. Taking all grains away, not just gluten. Remember, gluten is only one of the anti-nutrients denatured proteins in grains. We have lectins, we have phytates, and others that can cause problems. By taking the digestive enzyme, the enzymes, you see it can destroy those proteins. You saw that, he did the test. You know, and that, the, the neat thing about this product is it has enzymes in there that break down some of those other proteins. So that's really cool. So that's a tool. So would, would uh, Z-gluten be a part of this, uh, your pr thyroid protocol? Absolutely. Amen. You know, even if you take all grains away, because remember those proteins are in those tight gaps, right? So you have to keep them on the Z-gluten even when you take grains away to kick those, kill those proteins because those proteins are leaching across the gut. They're flaring up the autoimmunity. So again, before, and then let's say now you bring the thyroid down, you bring the um, autoimmune down. And once you get it down and the blood work is normal then, then you can add thyroid in. Well, let's say I, I want to do it and I don't have the blood test yet. Well, you can start with small amounts of thyroid, like six milligrams and even every other day. And then you can watch the patient's reaction, and then you can go to 12 milligrams, then 24. The trick to iodine is you have to go higher dose. You have to go up to 50 milligrams typically. Okay, but you start very slowly. The iodine kicks the toxin off the receptor. So everyone understands why the, the fiber and the Z-gluten would be a huge help in treating thyroid because the GI is a big player in autoimmune. Does everyone get that? So you have yet another tool, but you have to stop the autoimmune before you put it, you know, add iodine. And how we stop it is the cellular healing diet, taking grains away, putting them on Z-gluten, the fiber's gonna make the, you know, a difference. So we want to, in, obviously, downregulate inflammation. All the cellular healing products are gonna downregulate the attack and the inflammation. You're gonna stop the body attacking itself so you never go in first with iodine. Teach the concept of cellular healing and how it relates to the thyroid. Okay, so draw the cell and explain inflammation to your partner, okay? The three causes in how each one, each one affects the membrane. Relate this to T3 hormone, just like you saw me do. And tell your partner the toxic top five, which I haven't told you yet, but hang on to that. Write them down and then I just want you to remember them. Here they are, I'll give them to you. Number one, these are, the, these are the R number ones that you need to remove when you're dealing with a thyroid case. PCBs and dioxins are major toxins that will keep your thyroid patients in autoimmune. It'll keep them sick, keep them on their meds. There's where they're found. And you have the slide. Pesticides. We talked about that. Heavy metals. We talked about that. BPA. We talked about that. In halogens, we have not, except in this talk. Fluoride, bromine, bromine's the biggie. Where do you find bromine? Bread, bread white flour, and here's the biggie. It's, a, it's in everything with flame retardants, which means your new computers. If you buy a new Mac, that smell that you smell, that's bromine, that's, that's flame retardant. They load them up on the Macs. So everything you bring, cushions, furniture, new furniture, it's all loaded with bromine. Bromine is a halogen that is blocking these receptors. That's why we use, you know, we can use iodine 
and selenium and these things to knock off these halogens. Um, fluoride, you know. Also, look, Mountain Dew and Gatorade actually contains bromine. So who's that affecting? Our children. Thyroid. 90% of people in this country have a thyroid issue. It's affecting our children. We're starting them on bromine and giving the to them in droves in Mountain Dew and Gatorade and then their computers. I mean, everything they're touching, right? Okay, so that's the talks top five. Okay. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Pompa, for sharing those insights with us. Now, it's my job here to go into a little more detail about the systemic thyroid package altogether. And so we're gonna observe one thing about this package. It's dealing with the most critically important aspects of thyroid. You know, most companies have maybe a product for a thyroid and they have a few ingredients that can support the thyroid either in its function or as a tissue. But thanks to Dr. Shane Morris, who at Systemic Formulas has built out the major components of this program because of the interaction that these ingredients need within the cells. How great is it to have a cellular biologist um, helping construct the formulas to get the results we need inside the cells. It's inside the cells where nutrition truly matters. And if we can't deliver the goods to inside the cells and have the cellular function change, we're really not doing that much with our programs. So we're going to find that there's several key areas that this thyroid program has to deal with. One, we have to deal with stress because stress in the body is an overall turning down the thermostat for the thyroid function. So that's, that's one area we have to look at. Another area that we have to look at is going to be oxidative damage. The, the thyroid needs to use uh, free radicals in order to make hormones. And that's just fine. It's, it's, a, it's a powerful tool uh, for the body to use, but it needs to be used correctly. And since people's diets are not really getting enough of the phytonutrients that protect the thyroid from oxidative damage, which simply means that the mitochondria start damaging their own DNA, trying to make the ATP, adenosine triphosphate, energy of life that the cells need in order to make the thyroxine and the other thyroid hormone molecules. So that is one big area. We need to provide the cells the energy and we need to provide the cells the protection. And then for a third aspect that we're going to find that this program addresses so well is nutrition. That there's key nutrients that the body must have. In fact, there's nutrients the body needs in certain order even in order to really get the thyroid to turn on properly. So there's a finesse, there is a program and you'll find that information in print as well in the practitioner support program that comes uh, regarding this thyroid package. Now, uh, there's a fourth area that we need to look at. So we're looking at the intercellular processes that require nutrition, ATP energy, protection, and there's also this fourth area that is supporting the tissues, the, the weak and weary, the worn out tissues, the tissues that have been working so hard to support the tissue integrity. So out of this program, we're going to find formulas that support the tissue integrity, that support the cell membrane, that support the intracellular function. Now when it all comes together in a program like this, we're giving the body an opportunity that it can't refuse in order to help heal the thyroid. So that is one of the beautiful things of the thyroid package. Let's just go ahead and jump right in and look at this absolutely marvelous formula made by Dr. Shane Morris called MORS, M-O-R-S, otherwise known as methylation donors. Now there's two facets that a methyl molecule, carbon hydrogen, uh, put together and uh, that this molecule serves in the body. It's just one of nature's most fabulous molecules. And the body uses this molecule literally in hundreds and if not thousands of different functions. Okay, a methyl molecule. Now one of the things this molecule does is it turns off unwanted genetic expression. 
And we find today that so many people are right at the threshold of going into autoimmune thyroid disease. Doctors are starting to screen a lot more for thyroid antibodies with people. And if we just reached a point in what's going on in the environment from nuclear radiation, from toxins that are in the environment, the mercury from vaccinations, the mercury from dental fillings, the plastics that are in can liners and water bottles and so forth, the amount of halogens that are in the body now from bromine, from eating bread and baked goods because it's an additive to the, the bread products in the United States, to the bromine in the swimming pool, to the outgassing from computers and leather seats in the car and so forth, that we're getting exposed to that, to the, the fluorides, the fluorines that are coming from fluoridated water. So every day people are drinking something in their water that shuts down the thyroid's ability to handle life and to keep the metabolic pace up. Chlorine in water is another one that also shuts down the thyroid. So while these things are, the, the, the fluoride is unnecessary in public water and the chlorine, well gosh, we've got to have clean water or we end up going into epidemics. So that's, that's a, a debatable issue there. But we don't need to be putting fluoride, which shuts down the thyroid, under the guise of it's going to stop tooth decay any more than we need to put prune juice in the water to help granny's constipation. You know, we need to let water be water and let people eat and supplement the way that they should. Now, apart from that little side box there, the Moore's formula, methyl donors, two things. One, it works with the genetic expression of health. It can shut off, like flipping a light switch, genetic expression of disease. We do not want people going anywhere closer to thyroid or hypothyroid autoimmunity. Uh, secondly, for the, the Moors, that it also is functioning metabolically with the thyroid cells and is used in the recycling and the processing of their metabolic process. Now this formula very conveniently contains selenomethionine. And this is the selenium that is so needed by the body to protect the cells from the oxidative damage. It's also used by the body to convert the inactive form, a T4 thyroid hormone, to the active form, T3. And so at this point, the methyl donors um, and the selenomethionine are going to help the body protect the damage from what's called the uh, hydrogen peroxide processes that the thyroid uses to make hormones. So methyl molecules are lurking all around the metabolism and processes and genetic expression that can all come to bear on someone moving down the road uh, toward autoimmune disease or having the thyroid go more hypo than, um, and the, the situation about the methyl donors is that stress depletes them. And so this formula is allowing the body to flip the switch on stress and have the energy and the molecules to turn off stress. And so the body can go back to more of its relaxed, natural processes. Moore's is a godsend formula for us. It's unique to the systemic product line as, as using it with the thyroid. And you'll find in your own clinical practice, Moore's is working for the adrenals, the thyroid. It's working with the hypothalamus, it's working with the pituitary. It's a molecule in great demand and even a side benefit is it has to be present for neurotransmitters. So for people who have depression, of which 50% is linked to hypothyroidism and correcting hypothyroidism will banish depression in literally half of the people that are having the blues and just not feeling like life is so worthwhile anymore and that bringing these methyl donors in just can enliven people to make energy and to be happier and then to have their uh, DNA be expressive of the health, not the disease, a greatly needed uh, molecule and a greatly needed formula. The second formula in the thyroid program is called TMI. And that stands for thyroid metabolism. The I is for iodine. And so this formula is going to provide the standard therapeutic dose, which is 12 and a half milligrams of iodine iodide. And this is to support thyroid performance. 
And so it's also providing the selenomethionine that we talked about with the Moore's formula, but in greater abundance, it's providing that much needed uh, selenium to the body. Now, one thing I didn't mention when I talked about the Moore's, and that is to understand that for people who are really close to hypothyroidism that's autoimmune driven, in other words, their blood work will show autoimmune antibodies, that they must first take selenium and build that value. So as iodine increases in their diet, like taking a formula like this, is that what happens is they're prepared and the cells are prepared not to start running too hot and causing more oxidative damage or free radical damage, which then is going to drive more autoimmune expression as the immune system comes in to try to clean up the cells and it's recognizing an inflammatory state. So a lot of times, a clinician will start people on mores, and they may do two capsules twice a day for an entire month, then move it into the thyroid program. Mores will stay in the thyroid program, now at a lower dose, because it can be one and one, uh, one capsule twice a day with two meals. And now we have the TMI formula, bringing more of that valuable and necessary ingredient. And so it's going to work together with the mores and deliver the nutrients that the thyroid needs. Now, now that we're getting the iodine brought in to the program, there's a couple of concerns clinically. One might be that the iodine will start replacing the toxins, the bromine, the chlorine, and the fluoride. And so as that starts happening, the body will start discarding. In other words, there will be a detoxification that starts. This is why oftentimes practitioners might want to add additional detoxification support to the program. Now, there's only a little bit of detox support through the mores and so forth that's built into this program. And if people start expressing that now they've, they've eaten so much bread or been around so many chemicals that they're displacing the halogens, in their body and getting the toxic halogens out, that systemic also has a program to drive more glutathione into the cells and to catch the toxins as they come out through the gallbladder into the small intestine. And those formulas are called GSHX, the glutathione, and the bind, which is a charcoal that catches as much as 400 times its own weight in toxins, clinically proven, uh, laboratory proven, absolutely a sponge for the toxins. And so as an adjunctive program, we've got the ability to support this process even more on a case-by-case -case basis. It's not needed in most cases, but in some cases when people have that much toxicity from halogens that we have, the, we have a system now that can come in and catch that. Now, the TSH, the thyroid stimulating hormone, from the anterior pituitary, tells the thyroid to go into action. Now at that point, from a molecule assembled in the thyroid called thyroglobulin, tyrosine, the amino acid that's made in the thyroid's epithelial cells, is going to be combined with iodide. And that they're gonna get the iodide from something called the sodium iodide symporter, which is basically an iodine trap in the body. And if you want to think of the thyroid as a sponge, just like your kitchen sink sponge or a, a loofah mitt or something, it's a sponge. And in that sponge cells are little traps that catch the iodine and concentrates iodine. So the thyroid can go to work with iodine and make the hormones that literally run the metabolism of the body. Every bit of metabolism from how much oxygen the cells can take in through the membrane in order to make ATP, the energy of life, is controlled by the thyroid. The ability of the cell membranes to allow other hormones like testosterone and estrogen and progesterone uh, to come into the cell and create activity is controlled by the thyroid. This is why the thyroid is called the master regulator. We, it's, it's very difficult to supersede the thyroid in importance in how it runs everything in the body. We often think the hypothalamus is important because it's in the brain and it's collecting data 
or that the pituitary is the master endocrine gland because it's basically telling the thyroid when to work, telling the adrenals when to work. But I'll tell you, when it gets down in the trenches to the work being done, the thyroid is the master regulator. And it's involved in a series of feedback loops with the brain and the adrenals and the body, even the ovaries and the testes uh, and so forth, um, and the pancreas, as far as how it's regulating all the hormonal output of the body. Now, in making this, um, an enzyme called thyroperoxidase, which is going to facilitate the marriage of tyrosine and iodide, the thyroid uses a free radical. It's basically using hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. And, and out of that explosion of energy, which involves ATP, the thyroid is going to make these hormones. Now, in this program, the nutrients that are being provided to the body totally support all these aspects. Uh, you, you will not find another program that is this thorough in giving clinicians mastery over the thyroid and being able to help the body restore its health. Again, as said, selenium is the mineral that protects the thyroid from oxidative damage. And it helps the thyroid hormones work better as the T4 needs to be converted to T3 to become active. And this is a process going on in the liver, sometimes at the cell membrane, and yes, even in the thyroid itself. So throughout the body, this selenium is needed. Unfortunately, selenium is in short supply in the American food chain. It's not being brought into the agriculture. We have a pandemic of selenium deficiency. That's one of the reasons we have a pandemic of thyroid damage and thyroid dysfunction. Now, as you were paying attention to this process, I mentioned a few times, it takes a little ATP, meaning the adenosine triphosphate, that's going to provide the energy of life. The E-Energy formula, quantum ATP energy by systemic. It supports both the citric acid cycle, which I'm sure you're familiar with, the Krebs cycle or the Krebs-Georgi cycle. We learn it in junior high now. The kids are memorizing this thing because it's just a modern miracle of how our bodies make the energy to live and stay alive, to make our body heat that allows us uh, as an, an offshoot of making energy that really makes us live vital beings. And so the thyroid is a hog for ATP because it's got to be involved in facilitating this literally uh, nuclear reactor plants in the thyroid to make this molecule that's going to run the metabolism. If you think of the importance and why the thyroid is called the master regulator, it's because the thyroid sets the rate of detoxification. It sets the rate of energy in the body. If your patients don't have enough energy, and have you met a patient that doesn't? I mean, have you met a patient that says, yeah, I've got plenty of energy? They're pretty rare. And so there is this huge energy crisis going on that we're faced with in our practices. It's not the oil crisis or the electrical crisis. It is the chemistry of life, ATP crisis. And if our bodies don't have enough ATP, well, I've heard scientists say all diseases start with a lack of ATP. You might challenge that and say, yeah, how's a bacterial infection? Well, the immune system needs ATP in order to combat even bacterial infections or things that might be externally acquired. ATP, the energy of life. In this program, thanks to Dr. Morris and this absolutely incredible formula, it's going to support the body's production, not only of mitochondrial biogenesis, meaning more mitochondrial plants to make more energy, it's going to support the citric acid cycle so that the mitochondria can make ATP, but most importantly to the thyroid, it's the beta oxidation. The thyroid has a very intimate relationship with fatty acids. And we're gonna look at what we're gonna do about the fatty acids when we get to the VISTA formula, but the thyroid uses the membranes of the mitochondria to make the proper amount of energy because the fatty membranes of the cells in the mitochondria actually are a powerhouse of the, the nutrients that allow this thyroid to make the supercharged amount of energy it needs directly in order to have on demand making the thyroxin hormones 
and the triiodidum hormones that are going to run the metabolism. Why is that important? It makes our brains work. It makes our cells work. It works with detoxification. It governs the rate at which hormones are converted and hormones are made. Everything of our lives depend upon the proper RPMs, the proper revving of our engines in our bodies. And the thyroid, if it's ailing, if it senses too much stress in our lives, it will turn that thermostat down. It will put us into fatigue as a self-preservation mechanism. And so we're going around blaming all these external things for our energy being low and then doctors and scientists are scratching their head. Why is there chronic fatigue syndrome? We don't believe in fibromyalgia and they try to say that to a patient that's in chronic pain. Listen, it's simple. The thyroid makes a reversed thyroxin molecule, a reversed T3. It jams up the cells so that T3 cannot enter the cells and it's a self-preservation. It just says, look, I don't want the message getting through anymore. I'm afraid we're going to burn up. I'm afraid we're going to be doing too much metabolic function and cause damage. And so the thyroid and the body's innate wisdom says, let's turn the thermostat down. Like a bear hibernating, people go into this fatigue, then their brains don't work, their detoxification doesn't work. The body is not supposed to be in fatigue for very long. The body must recover. If we stay in an energy crisis, the body becomes more toxic. If the body is more toxic, there is more inflammation. Inflammation is the silent killer. And so we, we must have anti-inflammatory ingredients. And the wonderful thing about this program, as you look at the EPIC formula, you're going to be looking at these micro antioxidants that protect the cells, glutathione. You're looking at superoxide dismutase. You're looking at catalase that, that protect the cells, most importantly, protect the mitochondria. As the mitochondria must use free radicals to make ATP energy, it must use free radicals to make the thyroxine molecule and the other uh, hormones. And so the T4 and the T3 are made by free radicals. And so all that the body needs are the antioxidants within the cells. And so it's not about eating more fruit or something for antioxidants, it's getting those antioxidants inside the cell, getting them inside the organelles called mitochondria. That's what the EPIC is doing. It's helping break a cascade of free radical damage that can be self-perpetuating. It's called the no-ono cycle. It's one of several cycles within the cells that if in the face of a lack of nutrition can go rogue, can start damaging mitochondria, then when you have damaged mitochondria, not only are those cells not making energy right, but the immune system is called in and to destroy that cell. And the more we get our immune systems involved in destroying our own bodies, uh, maybe there's a lack of what's called apoptosis. That cell was supposed to self-destruct, but now there's waste. The immune system comes in, or that cell fails to perform, and the immune system comes in, something we cannot allow. Further, one other thing, the beautiful thing about working with systemic and these formulas, it's not all biochemistry. It's not all cellular biology. Dr. Shane Morris is an herbalomics expert. He studies the impact that herbs and botanicals, spices, have on the cellular regulation of life, meaning that it's the herbs that the body is attuned to, to cause RNA transcription of DNA to go inside the cell nucleus, elicit the messages of health, the proteins that cause the cells to function in health, and bringing health out of our DNA instead of bringing uh, subsistence out of DNA, which is also called disease. Diseases are just trying to bite us time so a human being has more time to reproduce and the species can stay alive. And, and so a person will accept a disease. That disease is already in the cell nucleus. We just do not want to express that. We do not want to cause autoimmune uh, activity with the thyroid. That's what this formula helps protect. That's what this formula helps reverse for people that are on the threshold there. So the EPIC formula builds the glutathione, 
to help the thyroid cells prevent lipid peroxidation of the mitochondrial membranes. It also carries magnesium in the formula and that's required to counter or to be a check and balance on a calcium-based enzyme system, the channels. You've heard of calcium ion channels, I'm sure, with cells. And this fuels the oxidative processes within the cell. So the body always has checks and balances. The problem today, if people are going into thyroid dysfunction, that the checks aren't there, the balances aren't there, and the process is running to the detriment and destruction of the body. In other words, a person might be in a 35-year-old body with a 60-year-old thyroid, and though the, the DNA is becoming uh, degraded, and they're now unable to produce the hormones that literally fund and fuel the body for all of its metabolic activities. We've got to get our engine revving right back to where nature wants it, not too fast, not too slow. Nutrition is the answer for accomplishing that. Nutrition is what this thyroid program in its entirety is giving the body all the different facets. No one doctor has brought all this information to bear and literally created a program that offers to the body virtually on a silver platter all the nutrition, all these thought processes, all the herbs and uh, vitamins and minerals and antioxidants and so forth and certainly the, the selenium and the iodine that allow the thyroid to function. So we're bathing and supporting, we're nurturing the thyroid tissue um, in a, a complete offer it can't refuse. And by giving this type of nutrition in this thyroid package, we're finding people are improving their thyroid performance literally within 30 days and more thoroughly within 60 days. That makes this a powerfully effective program because I'll tell you, when the light gets turned down, and you know already that a majority of people today, a huge majority, are already hypothyroid, and the light got a little dimmer in their lives and they don't know why, they don't even know it's the thyroid. And they, in fact, a lot of people don't know it's happening because it got dim so slowly. There was attrition and they've adjusted their lives. Now they're having a cup of coffee to try to drive a little energy and that works for two or three years and then they have to pay the piper. And that means the adrenals are being exhausted, the stress hormones predominate when that happens and that lowers the thyroid. As the thyroid becomes lower in its function, the person is stepping closer to cancer. The person is stepping closer to chronic degenerative disease. The person is moving toward autoimmune disease. And that's why 15 million people today are hypothyroid and another two and a half to three million people are now in a, hypo, a hyper state uh, called Graves disease simply because the immune system uh, now is targeting the thyroid stimulating hormone um, instead of the intercellular processes and now they're in this hyper crank it up state and both diseases are life threatening, life altering and the answer lies not with drugs, it lies with nutrition because that's nature's plan. It's not my preference, it's the law of the body that the herbs and the nutrients that need to be in our food are necessary. It's also the law of the body that says it's having a heck of a hard time right now dealing with the nuclear radiation that's washing over the United States, getting into food, the milk, the meat, uh, and coming into people's bodies, and it's gonna damage the thyroid, particularly if it's a radioactive iodine form, and we're dealing with the plastics and the chemicals and the mercuries, and you know the story. We've been taught this now for 30 years. We've been screaming about the toxins and yet still science and vested interest are turning their eyes away from the true cause. We have the knowledge, we have the moral responsibility to share this information with other people, particularly those that ask for the information by coming into our practices. Now a little while ago I mentioned the, the, the close relationship that the thyroid has with fatty acids. Now, we're going to get to a formula in just a minute called GF thyroid. Why the F? Why not GT, right? Well, the F stands for fatty acid. And even Doc Wheelwright, back 30 and 40 years ago, when he was assembling that formula and the herbs, 
he already was recognizing the critical importance that only today is science tapping into that the thyroid is in a very intimate relationship with fatty acids. Why? Because fatty acids comprise the cell membranes. Each cell is surrounded by this fatty acid cell wall. It's called the lipid bilayer. And the mitochondria are surrounded by a lipid bilayer. And the nucleus of the cell is surrounded by fatty acids. And this is what makes the cells work. This is the beauty of being, you know, they're partially hydrophobic and partially they love water. And, and this whole system works of this little life form within our bodies. And within that cell are the energy power plants and the DNA and all the information then, the blueprint that allows the, our bodies to function where it, it functions on their own and it's, they're, they're uh, able to embrace life. Now, what the VISTA formula, there's two forms, VISTA-1 and VISTA-2. VISTA-1 is capsule because its components are dry and it's best not to mix it with the oil. And then Vista 2 is the liquid, a very pleasant tasting uh, fatty acid supplement you take by an eyedropper. But together, they're providing one of the most incredible ingredients for cell membranes and it's called cardiolipin. It's a cell um, nutritional factor. It's a fatty acid that literally comprises a majority of the cell membranes. And by rejuvenating the cell membranes, the receptors can work. And when the receptors work right, hormones work right. This is why the thyroid has such powerful leverage over things like PMS, menopause, and for men, even over um, libido and sexual performance. It all comes back to the cell membrane where life began. Now, with the Vista 1 and 2, they provide the fatty acids in very specific ratios so that, uh, four to one, that they're able to communicate directly and be embraced by the cell membranes. So it's rejuvenating to the cell membranes throughout the body, but in this case, we really need those mitochondria and thyroid cell membranes to be healthy, to make the energy, to make the hormones. We need the membranes throughout the body to be healthy and not inflamed because now we need the hormones to dock with those cell membranes and initiate the miracles of life out of the human DNA by hitting those targeted receptors. Uh, the big, one of the big problems with thyroid problems is not the thyroid. It's the cell membranes throughout the body. This is a situation called thyroxin resistance. Why do cells become thyroxin resistant? Number one, inflammation from all the toxins and pesticides in the food and the, the uh, cosmetics and, and the, the bromine and the fluoride and so forth that's in, in the water supply and in our plastics and tools and computers and so forth. You understand we're immersed in things that are destroying our thyroid. And so down in the cellular level where we have to have the, the thyroxin communicate and cause a chain reaction within the cell to elicit activity that that's being blocked. This is why blood testing, looking at TSH is almost ludicrous to understand the thyroid performance because the performance is inside our cells, not in the bloodstream. The bloodstream's just carrying T4, carrying a little bit of T3 around. Now it's carrying a little T1 and T2 too, if we really want to get down to it, and calcitonin and so forth. But the, the point here is measuring T3 and T4 in the blood and thyroid stimulating hormone tells us really not so much about what's going on in the cell. When we look at the reversed T3, we start getting an idea if stress is blocking and causing thyroxin resistance at the cellular level. And so that's why in these materials that you have with this practitioner package, you have the little eight page booklet that talks about the lab testing and how to use lab tests to understand the thyroid and so forth. Very important to understand. And so let's look at now the tissue integrity of the body system. And with systemic in this package, you're getting the GF thyroid formula. Now that was made by Doc Realwhite some 30, 40 years ago as he traveled the globe finding the herbs that would support the thyroid as a tissue. 
Now, Doc Wheelwright's research was often called bioenergetic. That Doc was able to take measurements of the thyroid resonance field as the cells team up and work, and then anything that's in life and generating life, any life form, has a resonance signature. And Doc would take that resonance signature and he started combining other life forms known as plants, combining them together so that their combined and synergistic energy would match the thyroid. And he found it to be a rather simple formula. And what it does, it supports the thyroid as a tissue. In other words, it supports the collagen. It supports the, the membrane integrity. It supports the thyroid literally as a whole tissue. Now, the value of this is we're asking the thyroid cells to do some work. We need a good, strong, robust thyroid tissue to do it. It can't be done if the, the thyroid is losing its cellular identity that the DNA is weak, the telomeres are fraying off, the cells are only halfway working, the collagen is weak, and like a, a worn out sponge in the sink that you're ready to throw away because it's torn and tattered. That's the way our thyroids become. And so a formula GF is involved to re-strengthen, to renew, to nurture the thyroid as a tissue. So we're working a whole nother angle here on supporting the thyroid. It uses botanicals and it's going to also provide nascent uh, trace minerals and so forth through the botanicals. It's a synergistic formula. It's self-enhancing. Its communication is with the thyroid's innate vitality to remember who it is, what it is, what its job is, and to build a robust thyroid so it can carry us through life. In this thyroid package is adrenal support. That's the GA adrenal formula. Now this also was designed by Doc Wheelwright under the same premises. He measured the energy of the adrenal tissue. He understood that there was a cortex and a medulla and that they each put out different hormones for different reasons. One puts out the stress hormones, the cortisol, the epinephrine, the norepinephrine. Another one puts out aldosterone to hold minerals and that the adrenals are majorly responsible for the pH of the body, uh, weak adrenals, the person cannot fight infections, it cannot recover from infections well, cannot maintain the mineral balance throughout the body, the minerals that the body depends upon for energy and for proper hormone management for transport and so forth. So the adrenal formula is in this program because again it's the anti-stress factors that we want. We know that the thyroid has to be in a balanced feedback loop with the adrenals. The adrenals today are just as depleted, if not more so, than the thyroid. And so weak adrenals and continued output of stress hormones will undermine your thyroid program. So if, unless the doctor has adrenal support in a thyroid program, they're already shooting themselves in the foot because their, their results have to go down into the 20 percentile instead of being up in the 80 percentile just because they forgot a critically important facet of the, the feedback loop that the thyroid is engaged in. Now that feedback loop is going to go through the hypothalamus and through the pituitary. As a practitioner, you've got an option to add pituitary and hypothalamic support to the program. In doing so, you would use the number one activator by systemic and you would use also the GB pituitary. Um, this program is uh, self-contained. It's normally all anyone needs in order to make improvements with the thyroid. But if you're like me, we like to individualize and tinker a little bit and make sure that our programs are totally custom designed for patients. So I'm giving you that extra information here. Now, continued and excessive output of stress hormones, they're known to suppress the thyroid. Again, the feedback loop. The more that an adrenal hormone is dominating the metabolism, and gee, is cortisol dominating the metabolism today in our society? of high stress, of multitasking, with all the people that we see, over 50% of the population being in obesity, that we know cortisol is dominant. If cortisol is dominant, the thyroid is being suppressed. We need to support the adrenals in this program, and that's exactly what the brilliance of this formula is doing. So now we've discussed seven formulas, and they actually come in eight bottles, and, and these formulas comprise a month of the thyroid program. 
You also need to know for the support of your patients, there is a, a pill case so they can put their daily supply in a little pill case and know to take it with their meals and put that in the purse or the pocket in the briefcase and they're ready to go for the day, a big convenience factor. There's also a, a DVD presentation on the thyroid and some of the incredible attributes of this program. So as you send a patient home with this program, they're already getting support. We hope that that saves you from having to be asked a lot, a lot of questions and that your time can be better used. Also, it builds your patient's enthusiasm and compliance for doing the program. Inside that DVD case is a little eight page booklet. It's a guide to doing the program. It explains the basal metabolism test. It explains the role and the responsibilities that each formula has. And it just gives all around good advice uh, about working to rebuild the program. So your patients have a user's guide, a DVD, and a pill case, complements of systemic formulas that's in the packaged box as you hand it out. And so at this point, you've got the tools, your patients have the support, it's a turnkey system, and now you understand better of what this program is all about and can have confidence in recommending it to people. And let me tell you, do your patients need it? Dr. Pompa quoted 90% uh, of your patients are hypothyroid. That means 90% of your patients have a resistance to feeling better and to responding to the programs you put them on. Thyroid and thyroid management is foundational. If you skip that step, then you're moving people into programs and reducing your effectiveness. First things first. We know that we have programs now with systemic for leaky gut. That is another foundational program and it directly relates to the thyroid health. So we have prerequisites. What about glucose metabolism? Very important to have these systems working better so our patients can get well. The detoxification program. What was the ultimate cause other than nutritional deficiency, stress, and nuclear radiation in our atmosphere and all the, the Wi-Fi, airport scanners, uh, radar, and all the type of radiations, whether uh, a person really wants to think that cell phones and so forth is a, a form of radiation that's bothering the thyroid. We can debate that and let time and science be the answer to that. But we are awash on this planet in different forms of radiation, ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. If indeed that is damaging the DNA and the function of the thyroid, we're literally awash in the, the, the toxins and pesticides that are destroying uh, the thyroid. Having a thyroid program like this and being able to restore thyroid health is absolutely fundamental and necessary to the right outcomes of trying to help people with depression, anxiety, hormonal imbalances, the aging process, and so I want you to understand you've got a powerful and effective program and one that literally nine out of ten people walking in your front door for your good counsel needs this program in order for the other reasons they came <laughs> to see you for that to even work well. So again, this is a foundational program. Your use of this program is changing lives. Your use of this program is making a true difference with your patients. So it's just an absolute pleasure to uh, join with you in our mission of bringing this type of nutrition to the body's innate intelligence so the body can use these marvelous and well thought out, synergistic, comprehensive ingredients to promote the health of the thyroid from which in turn the entire body, the mental and emotional state of a person is going to be grabbed by the bootstraps and lifted up into a new plateau of health. So congratulations for making it this far. Congratulations for committing to this thyroid program. I know you're just going to be using it hundreds of times, hopefully in a month, to help people improve their health. And because of that, you certainly deserve and will find people beating a path to your door. Thank you so much.